Hello, everybody. Stock Talk Thursday. Blair Nightingale here. Wow. What a, what a week. What a week. I told you guys just a few weeks ago, I was back here in Texas, and uh, I made it just in time for the blizzard. Let me put it that way. You can see I've still got my jacket on today. So as you guys are joining us, piling into the class here, uh, Blair Nightingale, Stock Talk Thursday. We're here at this time every Thursday looking at stocks. Today is going to be great. Today is going to be great. I had an experience this week. It's kind of inspired me, and I hope you guys are really going to receive something special out of that today. Uh, before I get into that, just know you've got comments that you can post uh, on the right side of my screen, uh, wherever it is on your screen. Go ahead, post the comments. Let me know where you are, how you're doing. Uh, hopefully you've got power. Hopefully you're doing okay. Uh, we definitely had an interesting experience. Unfortunately, we canceled on Monday. I know a lot of you guys would have been with us on Monday, uh, but just too much going on given the circumstances. So we weren't able to do that, but we're back. It's a little chilly, uh, but we're, we're, we're making it work. So hopefully everybody out there is staying safe. And um, looks like we're going to get on the other side of this here coming into next week with some of the weather. Thank you for everybody across the country, your prayers, uh, your messages sent into us at TradeWave. Still got a couple people who are uh, without power, uh, even in our team. So we can continue to reach, uh, uh, pray, pray for them and, and, and reach out to us on that. Um, that said, I saw some people coming in here. If you're joining us by recording, welcome. Happy to have you. You can always comment and ask questions if you're joining us on Facebook, if you're joining us on YouTube, if you're with us live today, go ahead, pop a comment in there. Let me know who is with me. I know we haven't been together in a week now, so let me know who's with me. Valerie is in BC, Canada, so you're doing okay, and you're used to the cold. You're used to the cold. It's a little warmer out there anyway, isn't it? So, Valerie, thank you for being on with us today. Today, it's stock talk. This is our this is our program we do every Thursday. Listen, I got to say this. I got to say this. I don't know if you guys have heard of Clubhouse, okay? I don't know if you've been on Clubhouse. A lot of people getting on this Clubhouse app. You say, Blair, I have no idea what Clubhouse is. Well, Clubhouse is a new social media app. You say, Blair, the last thing I need is another social media app. Well, I'm not selling you a social media app today, so you don't have to have what you don't want to have. But I'm going to tell you this. I've been on Clubhouse, and Clubhouse is almost like a, it is, it's a clubhouse. It's, it's where people like you and I, people who are in business, people who are pastors, people who are speakers and teachers and trainers and do all kinds of different stuff, they go on there and they let you listen to who they are, and they teach. You might get on there and have a, a very interesting discussion. You can actually join in the discussion. Why am I talking about this today? Because I've been on Clubhouse quite a bit lately. A lot of us here at Tradeway are on this app helping other people like we're doing right here today on Facebook and YouTube uh, understand the opportunity that they have in the stock market and how to safely and confidently manage that opportunity. That's what we want to help you do. That's why we're here every week, right? We want to bring an increase into your financial knowledge so that you can use that for your benefit in your own life. That's the goal. That's why we do this. Well, I noticed on Clubhouse, you know, a lot of people are talking, 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 and no disrespect, but I understand that we all only have a finite, a small amount of time, right? Depending on, on the stage of life we're in or the challenges, the responsibilities, we only have a little bit of time. And there's a lot of fluff. So here's what I'm inspired to do today. And here's something I really am excited to do. Two things. Number one, I want to say the information that we're giving you on these broadcasts, this is not just information. I'm hoping that you are getting an impartation. What does that mean? Well, it can mean a lot of things. But what I mean right now is I'm giving you information, but I'm transferring it to you, I hope, with excitement, and that would lead to application in your life. The goal is that you actually have something you can use. You can use effectively. Otherwise, what's the point? Learning without action 
doesn't change anything. And that's what I want to help you do. I want to help you actually change something. That's what I want in my own life. So when I come on here, I come in with an expectation of saying something that's going to happen in this 30, 35, 45 minutes is going to change me. It's going to change you. It's going to change the game. Okay. I had a very wise mother and she used to tell me I would play solitaire and she would remind me if any time I moved even one card, one card in the game, she'd be like, go through the deck again. If you change just one card, it changes the whole game. Okay. And with God in our lives, we're never in a place like solitaire, solitaire where we get stuck and there's nothing we can do. So I hope that I can give you something today that's going to just shift even just one card. You say, ah, oh, that's not that big of a deal. Ah, oh, it can be. It can be. Remember that Jesus said the kingdom is such as this, the seed, the smallest of seeds that can be planted, that can be planted, and it becomes something that gives shade and life and a home for animals, and it is a massive thing. Sometimes we're praying for oak trees. God's giving us acorns, right? Praying for oak trees. He's giving us an acorn. I love it when I get the oak tree. Bam, just get it. Sometimes I get seeds, and I hope that I'm giving you some seeds. That's number one. Number two, I want to say today, we're going to go in. We're going to do Stock Talk Thursday tech stocks. We're going to look at tech stocks today. And when I say that we're going to look at tech stocks, we're going to look at tech stocks. We're not just going to talk about tech stocks. We're not just going to give fluff. We're going to look at tech stocks. And as I do this, I'm going to move through these somewhat quickly today, but I'm going to give you information on how I uh, process what's happening in a stock. Okay. That is extremely valuable. Some of it took me years to learn. If you'll honor it, it will give you tremendous insight and it'll only have taken you maybe 30 minutes to learn. You say, well, Blair, I got to learn a little bit more to apply it. I got to do it in a practical circumstance. I, I agree. I agree. That's what the Tradeway program is all about. I'm going to give you some seeds, though. I'm going to give you some seeds today, and we're going to get into it. Uh, howdy, howdy. Just got done shoveling snow here in Colorado Springs. JD says, glad you're here. No luck on Facebook again. Interesting. Okay, so it looks like we're still missing some people from Facebook. I know that that happened last week. I, uh, I looked into that. It, it, it seemed as though that we had it fixed, but I guess we don't. Uh, Blair, you planted a seed talking about seeking a mentor. I found a mentor and it has been life changing. Oh man, I can't tell you actually how satisfying that is for me to hear. I do a teaching for those of, the, of you that don't know, and I'm gonna tell you how you can get access to this later. On the keys to breakthrough, now, these are not concepts either. Remember I said there's a difference between information and impartation. Impartation moves you to action. Information, eh, it just fills your head, right? I don't need more information. I need power. I need something that's going to move me and change my life. So I have something called the keys to breakthrough. And one of them, as Jeffrey mentioned, is getting a mentor, getting a mentor uh, and that's just one of those keys, but it can be a tremendously powerful key. What we get to do right here on some level is mentorship. Now, I don't get to dive into your life to the capacity that I would like to, okay? I'm going to give you an opportunity before the end of the broadcast for you and I to do a little bit more together than we've ever been able to do. And I think you're going to be happy to see uh, what that is, but we'll get back to that. Like I said, today we're going to look at at tech stocks. So here's what I'm going to do today. It's going to be a little bit different for the uh, Stock Talk Thursday. Now, now, remember, we're looking at hot or not. So I'm going to look at each one of them. I'm going to look at the stocks individually, hot or not, but I'm also going to look at tech stocks as a whole. We're going to get a little bit of an idea of hot or not. And I'm going to give you something that you can do. I'm telling you, I'm not hyping this. I'm telling you there are some simple tools in trading. If you just don't know what they are, then you can't use them. But all you need to know is what they are, and they can add tremendous value to your ability to do what? To trade or to choose to trade stocks at a better time. 
you know, sometimes we choose in trading the stock and it's not a bad stock. It's not a bad chart. It's not a bad pattern. It's just not the right time, right? We can never know exactly what a stock is going to do. I've said that on here a hundred times. Stock trading is not about knowing the future. It's about being able to effectively manage the risk. And that means getting in at better times and avoiding worse times. I'm going to show you one tool. And this is actually where we're going to start today. I'm going to show you one tool that when you use this, it is going to help you. It is going to help you tremendously in understanding where is the market at in this particular instance in regards to tech stocks, okay? Not just the whole market. We've looked at the S&P 500 before, but I'm gonna show you something a little different right now. I'm gonna share my screen and you're gonna see what I mean regarding tech stocks. Now, let me just stop for one sec. Tech stocks, for those of you who aren't, Okay, Jeffrey said I tried Facebook again and it's working. Excellent. So if you're joining us on Facebook, welcome, welcome. Uh, what I'm going to uh, say first is tech stocks. What do I mean by tech stocks? Well, first of all, I'm using it in short. So what I mean is technology. Okay, technology. Now, there are many forms of technology, obviously, but when we talk about tech stocks, we're talking about a broad range of stocks, but things like the FANG stocks, okay? FANG stocks, you might see that in the news. If you follow CNBC, okay? They give you uh, stock news all throughout the trading day. They may refer to the FANG stocks. Now the FANG stocks are very popular. What does that mean? Well, F-A-N-G, right? Facebook, Apple, okay? Netflix, Google, FANG. Now there are other popular tech stocks and we're gonna look at those. We're not going to look at them all, but we're going to look at a bunch. Those are big ones. And of course, those are household names. We know those companies. Amazon. Amazon is in there. Okay. Uh, so these are big, big stocks. So when I say tech, that gives you kind of an idea, right? This could be uh, semiconductors, right? Microchips, Netflix, streaming services. That's more media, but it's included. Okay. So those are kind of what we mean when we talk about tech stocks. And let me say this, tech stocks led the charge last year, 2020. Let me go ahead and share my screen. So you can see what I can see. Okay, now we're going to go here. This guy over here. You can see here, we've looked at this before. Look at the market, okay? This is the S&P 500. This is the overall market, okay? So you're gonna get a couple of things today. I want you to catch this, okay? Because you know what? Sometimes, I don't even think it's that we don't value some of the things that are in front of us. I think sometimes if we don't really know how it helps us, then how are we supposed to value that? What is that supposed to mean? So for some of us who are on today that maybe are newer than others, uh, whether you're joining us live or you're watching by recording, I think that's something important to say. We're looking at the S&P 500. This is an index, okay? It shows us the movement of 500 stocks across the sectors of the stock market, really giving us a picture of how the stock market is performing for that day. Well, this was the, the drop for COVID-19. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but this recovery here has been massive. And if you see where my dotted line is there on the chart, that was the high before COVID-19 shut down the economy and tanked the market. So we are well beyond that level, 3382, okay? We're, we're getting close to 4,000 here, okay? 4,000. So we have grown tremendously. Here's what I wanna say. Tech stocks, tech stocks led the charge most of that time, okay? Tech stocks like, for example, Zoom. We're going to look at Zoom today. Well, you and I have most likely learned in the last year now, 9, 10, 11, 12 months, how to use Zoom and be on a Zoom session, some kind of a streaming session, much like we are doing right now. So you can imagine the kind of growth that technology received. And so we saw these stocks 
kind of take center stage. The question is right now, as the economy shifts somewhat slowly, but surely it's shifting because we are starting to see some reopening, right? We're starting to see some advanced reopening. We're starting to see vaccines. We talked last week, if you missed it, about COVID stocks in particular. So we're starting to see that anticipation of normalization. Well, does if that happens, then can tech stocks hold the kinds of valuations that they received over the course of last year that you see? Now, tech stocks don't comprise, they don't make the entire S&P 500 index. Okay, so I'm showing you the S&P 500 right now. This isn't all tech stocks, but I can tell you that some of the major tech stocks, Microsoft, for example, some of them are more heavily weighted in the S&P. I said there were 500 stocks in the S&P 500. Yes, that's true, but they aren't all weighted the same. When certain stocks move up, it has more of an influence on the index moving up or down, okay? So some of these tech stocks are the most, in fact, significantly the most heavily weighted stocks in the index. So if they move up, that has more weight to move the industry or to move the averages up. If it moves down, it tends to have more weight to move the averages down. So while I'm not looking at a tech stock, I can tell you confidently that the market moved up in large part because we had a massive bull run on tech stocks. So we're going to look at tech stocks today and say, well, where are they still at? What do I need to know? That's what I want to show you. Now, remember I told you, I'm going to give you one tool today, one tool today. I'm going to give you more than one today, but one of them is what I want to highlight that is going to help you. Now let's look at this for a second here. Okay. This is the index. What does the index do? I said already, it gives me a broad perspective on the whole of the market. Why would that be helpful? Well, because one of the things that it does for us as traders, remember I've talked about the difference between trading and investing. I'm talking about trading, two different skill sets, both valid, both important, but different. I'm talking about trading today. So in trading, I used S&P 500 as a dashboard, right? I'm looking at the dashboard of the plane, altitude, speed, all these kinds of things that I wanna know. Hey. What's happening right now? Is there more buying going on or more selling? Is there more positivity in the air or more negativity? That's what the index represents to me. It helps me know is the conditions of the weather, if you will, are they cloudy or are they sunny? Are they clear? If they're cloudy, I'm going to bring an umbrella, right? On the weather, you would prepare based on the conditions. You don't necessarily know exactly what's going to happen. There's no way you can know that. Now you can maybe trust the weatherman and he has some instruments and tools that helps him know a little bit better, but there's no guarantee. He doesn't totally know. You prepare, that's market tone. And that's what you do with the S&P 500. You say, Blair, is there a way that I could look at essentially market tone for just the tech industry? And my answer would be yes. Now, like the S&P 500, it's not a perfect measurement of the whole industry, but it's, it's a very helpful one. Well, I'm going to show you what you can use in your charting software, okay? In your charting platform, there are multiples, and we show you how to do that here at Tradeway, uh, so that you have some idea, not just of what the overall market is doing, but what this sector this is the tech sector, okay? Market, sector, industry. We're looking at sectors. This is tech stocks, very, very popular companies. What is it? Get to the point already, Blair. This is called, I'm actually gonna, you'll see what I'm doing here in a sec, but I'm gonna just delete these so that we can focus on where we were because these show where, or excuse me, so we can focus on where we are. Those lines show us where we were. Now, what we're looking at here is the XLK. All right, if you're gonna put in a ticker, then you would put in XLK, ticker, 
If I am looking for the S&P 500, I can put in SP-500 or SPX. If I'm looking for Apple, I could put in AAPL, Apple, Netflix, NFLX, Zoom, ZM, Etsy, E-T-S-Y. It goes on and on. Okay, I know a lot of these tickers. Well, XLK is what we call an ETF. Now, I don't have time to go into an ETF right now. I'm not saying go out and buy the XLK. I'm just going to show you how we can look at the XLK and use it as a tool like I just mentioned we do with the SP500. So what you're looking at on the screen here is the XLK. This is the XLK. This is the technology sector, okay? This is a product that is sold that tracks the technology sector. And it can be a helpful instrument. It can be a helpful tool, okay? No more, no less, but it can be a helpful tool to know, hey, where's the tech sector at? Because in a moment, we're gonna go over and we're gonna look at some tech stocks. Now, I get to look at the market and go, mm, sunny or cloudy? How much risk do I wanna take? And that's a whole conversation on market tone, something we teach extensively. Why? So that you have confidence to look at a chart and go, I would buy today. If I find a good trade, today would be a good day to buy. Oh, no, today would not be a good day to buy. I don't, I don't want to trade today. Our students get that confidence. You want that confidence. You want to have that confidence because you know what's going to happen because you know the present conditions. Let's take it a step further. Look at the XLK right here. This is the tech sector. If I'm thinking of trading a tech stock, maybe it would be helpful for me if I would go and say, where is the tech sector at right now? Is it doing well? Is it doing poorly? Is it transitioning from poor to potentially better? Is it transitioning from better to potentially poor? Now we've talked about charting on here before. So remember, you can always go back into the previous broadcast and cover a concept that you may have missed or might need some review on. As a whole, remember I was talking about Clubhouse? As a whole, the access you have to information on just this series here, Tradeway, YouTube, me, and you, is tremendous. It's tremendous. So we've covered this. Remember, support and resistance comes into play. Remember, we're talking trading, not just investing. Trading is taking advantage of those short-term price changes, okay? I could buy the stock here and sell it over here, or I could buy it and sell it, buy it and sell it, buy it and sell it, buy it, sell it, buy it, oop, sell it. Maybe I would have stopped out there. Maybe I wouldn't have. Probably not if I got in down here because I'm higher than I was when I bought it. We talked about that. So you could repeatedly enter and exit the stock if you were following that system. There is a potential there for you to do more activity than just buying and holding the stock, okay? And there are benefits to either, but tremendously trade, being able to trade the stock can yield uh, tremendously better results. It certainly has that potential. So... I would want to know, how is this sector doing? Well, here's what I want you to see today, guys. First of all, if you look at this chart, when you look, here's the first thing you want to do. Just look from left to right. Let's not miss the forest for the trees here. Just look from left to right. Well, where are we going? Well, we're going up. This chart is clearly going up, but it's not just going up, is it? It's giving us what I like to call the peaks and valleys. You can see the mountains. You can see as it's rolling, okay? But it makes a high, the peak, and then it comes down and makes a valley. But the next valley is higher than the last valley was. And the next peak is higher than the last peak was. Think about that for a second. I don't want you to miss this. What a tremendous thing to be able to recognize and say, hey, this thing is in a pattern. This is a trend. And if I know this, these trends when they're healthy make higher, I'm going to say it this way, higher valleys 
and higher peaks, as long as they're healthy, I can instantly look at a chart and say, Ooh, that's healthy. That's healthy. I'm telling you what, guys, this is stuff people don't know. They don't know this stuff. Doesn't make us better, but it makes us more effective. I promise you that. So this is really, really helpful stuff. We'll look at this chart. This chart says this stock, this ETF, it's an ETF, but this, this uh, sector dashboard, look at the sector is not only trending up left to right, but it's also got those peaks and valleys and it's pretty consistent. In fact, today it bounced right off support. I watched this all day, all day. I watched this. In fact, Ben Russell and I, a coach here at Tradeway talked about this on a webinar that we had today. Okay. Uh, we were teaching one of our advanced strategies and this was a good example of that. So you can see right now, the tech industry, as far as this chart says, is that support. Okay. It's that support. Now, again, I'm not saying go out and buy this. I'm not making recommendations on buying today, but I am saying this is in a healthy pattern and it's doing at support what I would want this to do at support. What a tremendous tool to look behind the curtain a little bit and say, how sunny and clear is the tech sector or is it foggy? If this was foggy or rainy, even it was negative. That would affect how I would approach any trades. We talked on here before. There's ways where we can learn to use options to make money in a position when the stock is going down. This helps me decipher not only whether it's a good opportunity, but what kinds of tools should I use? Okay, so let's go ahead. If we don't have any questions at this point, remember you can always go ahead, throw those in the comments there. I will come back and I will be able to answer those questions. Um, if we don't have any questions at this point, listen, I just wanna start going through some stocks. And what I'm gonna do today, I said this is gonna be a little bit different. What I'm gonna do today is I'm literally going to go in and I'm gonna give maybe just a couple of points on every chart, okay? On every chart, I'm gonna give you a couple of points of what do I see on that chart. I want you to get a little bit more exposure to the process that happens inside my head when I look at charts, Ben Russell and I were talking earlier today on the broadcast I previously mentioned some, for some of our students. And, and he was explaining to our students that, you know, really, we've done this so many times and we have the skill sets where we can come in and we're not spending a lot of time looking at stocks every day. I mean, we're really not. It, it doesn't require a lot of time. I've talked about it before, but really, guys, if you really want to learn to do this, then there is a principle or a, a metaphor, if you will, in the idea of, of a plane, a jumbo jet, if you will. It's going to take more energy to get that thing off the runway, get it up to speed, get it off the runway, get it up to cruising altitude. It takes more energy, okay? Landing a plane and taking off at a plane, those are really the, the most skillful parts of flying. Once you get up there, it's not going to burn no energy, but it is going to shift into a lower energy. What am I trying to say about trading? Same thing. You've got to learn how to fly the plane. Okay. You've got to learn how to fly in different conditions. If you want to get up and go somewhere, if you want to get to where you want to go, then you've got to learn how to fly the plane. It doesn't just happen. And it does take more energy initially, but with training, expertise, time, practice, then you get up to cruising altitude. These things can happen really quick. So today, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take you through most, probably not all, but most of the stocks I've set aside for today in a little tech watch list. And uh, we'll just look at some of these companies. We'll start with the FANG stocks that I mentioned, some of the most popular ones that are out there. Uh, and, and we'll move from there. Okay, so the first one we're going to start with is Facebook. Because here's the thing, guys. You know, we can, we've got to keep coming back to this idea of trading being different than investing. And I know we've got some folks on here. Grab my Topo Chico here. Uh, that's not product placement. Just need a little water. 
one of the things that we've got to say, because I know we've got different folks on here that you're at different levels. Some of you, some of you have never traded in your life. You have no idea how to trade. And listen, when I started zero, I had zero idea. I was in the ministry and I'd been in the entertainment industry. Okay. That's my background. It's not numbers. It's not business. It's not economics. So anybody can learn to do this. If I can learn to do this, uh, I, and I want to speak to that crowd. And we've got it all the way up to some of our students I know are on this podcast. You're in our programs. You've learned a tremendous amount, okay? Uh, and maybe have been trading for years. We've got to come back to this place where we understand this is not talking about investing today. We're talking about trading today. Why do I say that? Well, let's look at Facebook. Okay, Facebook has got, uh, it's a household name. I mean, chances are, you know, most of you on today have a Facebook. Some of you are on Facebook right now, right? A lot of people use Facebook. A lot of business is built around Facebook these days. So it's very popular. But what we're talking about is when is an actual time where I would buy and sell the stocks? We're talking about getting into the weeds, rubber hits the road, whatever metaphor you want to use. Uh, that's what we're talking about. So just being popular. And just thinking, oh, Facebook does really well, that'll probably grow, is not the mindset we use, right? We get to do better than that. And one of the ways that we do that is by looking at the chart. And I can tell you this right away. What did I tell you about peaks and valleys? So this is what I'm going to focus on today as I look through these charts, because there's lots of different pieces we could look at. And again, in our programs, that's what we do. In fact, we do a live trading hour with our students every day here in Central Standard Time, two to three uh, PM, the market closes at 3 PM central standard time, two to three, we go on live, hundreds of our students come on and we go and we go through as many companies and tickers as they want to. Okay. We go to a, a very deep level on how to help them walk through these trades. It's very helpful. Jeffrey mentioned getting a mentor. That's what that helps you do. Okay. There are different levels of mentorship. This is the start. We can go further from there. It just depends on how much you want to invest in yourself. It's not about me. It's about you investing in yourself. What's happening here? I'll show you just one thing on each of these charts. We talked about peaks and valleys. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a tool here. Look at this. Okay. Before I assess anything else about Facebook, I immediately see that. We made, I'm going to... What I mean here when I say peaks and valleys is also what is more commonly referred to as highs and lows. So I say peaks and valleys today as we're doing a, some time together, but we're talking about highs and lows in the price, okay? Peaks and valleys. So you've got, you've got a, a, a peak, you got a valley. You got a peak, a major one, and it's what? It's lower than the one before it. This one, lower than the one before it. This one, lower than the one before it. And now we've got this guy. Went up, came back down. So it's going down. Now you say, well, wait a second, Blair. What do you think? Is Facebook going to fall off the earth? No, I don't think Facebook's about to fall off the earth. Remember, we're not talking about investing. We're talking about trading. Short-term movements. This is not pretty to me. This is not clear. This is not clean. This is not higher highs and higher lows, higher peaks and higher valleys. It's the opposite. So for me right now, if I was trading stocks on this, remember we also talk about options and some of the, di the different things you can do with that I mentioned earlier. We're talking about stocks here. If I was doing stocks, this is a pass for me. This is a pass, okay? It's a pass, it's a mess, and it's making lower peaks, lower highs. I don't like that. Apple, let's take a look at that. Immediately, what can you start to see? Well, I'm zoomed out a little further. I'm gonna remove all this. I'm zoomed out a little further. You can see that overall, Apple has been doing tremendously well, okay? We've had a little bit at this. Here's another thing I'm gonna tell you today. This is good stuff, I'm telling you what. This ain't Clubhouse fluff. And I'm not ripping on Clubhouse or Speakers, I'm on there. I love it. Heard tre some tremendous stuff on there. Uh, but I've also heard a lot of stuff that wastes your time. I don't want to waste your time. This is 
where we hit. And then what did we do? We hit there again. If I had been watching that that day, would I have known it was going to drop? Of course I wouldn't have, but I would have anticipated that it probably would because that's a major level. You had a peak and another peak tested the same spot. And then what did it do? It dropped. It dropped. And when we're talking short term, that's very important to know. So that's really huge. That immediately jumps out to me. I said I was only going to do one thing on every chart, but here I am. I'm giving you two things. What do I see from there? Again, this is really the most important thing. Okay. Now we spend a lot of time training you on how to draw these lines and draw them well. So I'm doing it pretty quickly here. I've done it many times. There's a lot of reasons why I would choose the line to be somewhere in this vicinity, somewhere close to this. But that was making higher highs and higher lows. And now it has broken through. So for me, Apple, such a great company. Apple's got to do well, maybe, but I'm going to wait until it shows me that, right? I'm not going to swim into a wave that's not there. If you've ever gone surfing, I've talked about that on here before. Even if you've seen it, you lie down on the board, you're swimming, swimming. You got to get ahead of that wave to catch it. That's what we're doing in trading. We're trying to catch the wave. The big money's going to step in. It's going to take the, the price and we want to go with it. We got to get ahead of it. This is broken down. This is broken down. You say, Larry, you're talking about 100 miles an hour, man. How am I supposed to go and buy stocks today? I don't want you to go buy stocks today. Not as a result of this broadcast. What I want you to do is go, there are a few major tools here that he is showing me. You can rewatch this broadcast if I need to. But a few major tools that I'm being shown today that can help me make decisions. It can help me look at a stock and get something objective, not just something emotional, not just something in the news, not just a tip, all that kind of stuff, right? For me, it's a no. It's a no. I don't see what I want to see, okay? Let's go to, in fact, why don't I just do this? It'd be so much easier. Looks like I didn't put Amazon in here. So let's just go on ahead over to Amazon. And Amazon, <laughs> Amazon is a tremendous stock because everybody's using Amazon. I mean, think about it. When the economy closes down and you got to get what you got to get, you're going to Costco, right? You're going to the grocery store and you're going to Amazon. You're probably going to Walmart, right? I mean, those are some of the, as far as retailers like that, that's what we did. Amazon benefited tremendously from that. Amazon's going sideways though. Look at this chart, right? I'm looking at peaks and valleys and I'm noticing that I, I have higher valleys, but I also have lower peaks. So it's kind of opposite. So for now, this one's kind of indecided, undecided, indecision, right? It's just going sideways for now. I need to see, we talked about bulls, bears, and squirrels the other day. That was important because I use those terms a lot. I need to see the bulls take over in Amazon. Now, Amazon is an expensive stock. Okay, so a lot of us, unless we learn how to trade options and use some of the skill sets that we have there, for most of us, we're not going to be trading Amazon. However, it's a tremendous stock. There's lots of opportunities in Amazon, and we just need to see some conviction on the price. So for me right now, it's a no. You say, oh my goodness, Amazon, how can Amazon be a no? Because I don't see the conviction there that I need to see. In fact, where we're at today specifically is right at resistance. So I would not be going long, remember we talked about that, bullish on this particular chart today. That's what I would not be doing, okay? That's Amazon. Let's go over here, over here and look at the next one, which is Netflix. Netflix. Now, Netflix, interestingly enough, you know, if I zoom out, it's also benefited tremendously. Look back down here, $383 at the time. Before COVID-19, it took a pretty hard hit, and then it's done extremely well. It's done extremely well since then. It's been a pretty volatile stock, though, hasn't it? You look at this chart, it's pretty messy. I mean, Netflix has been a market darling is the way I would put that for, for some time. Um, but you know what? There's a lot of other companies in the streaming space now. 
they're not all by themselves anymore. Okay. So there's a couple ways I can look at this back here. It was just going sideways, right? You've got peaks and valleys again, but neither of them are higher or lower. They're the same essentially, right? You've got the same lows and you've got essentially the same highs. So it was just going sideways. Okay. We teach you how you can take advantage of something like that. And then what ended up happening here is something that looks more like this. You really had um, let me just get rid of this. They did an update on this software and it changed the controls pretty dramatically. And I've got to say, I'm not Okay, that's where we were. What did we have here? An earnings report, earnings. We teach our students special rules around earnings, too risky, we don't trade earnings. Uh, you can fly your own financial plane, but if you keep trading earnings, don't say I didn't warn you because it's tricky, it's dangerous. Uh, yeah, and we could adjust these a little bit from here, but. That I think is a pretty good picture. So what do we got here? Well, you're watching me learn, or you're, you're watching me and learning. How do I see these right away? Well, we're making what? Higher lows. So this is ultimately moving up, but I'm not in a position on this chart right now that says I would do this. Now I'm still gonna keep it in a watch list because it may get to a place that I really like, but today it tells me no. And you say, well, Blair, We've looked at a few charts now. All of them have been no so far. Fine by me. There's a lot of charts. I'm not going to force a trade when it's not there. And a lot of looking, I, I'll tell you what, I say no to more charts every day than I say yes to, right? To the uninitiated in the market, we might think, well, gosh, we've got to be able to find the trade right away. Well, we, we ultimately have some tools at Tradeway that can help you, uh, I'm going to say downsize the time it takes to find good setups. We have some tools that you can, can even put right in your charting software. It's not going to buy stocks for you, but it's going to find great setups and it's going to do it in just a push of a button. In fact, that's what the webinar of doing with Ben Russell earlier today was about. So we can streamline it, but I'm going to say no more than I'm going to say yes. That's okay. Cause like I said, once I practice this, get up to altitude, Man, I'm just moving through these things. I've got my watch lists. I'm go looking at the chart going, no, next, no, next. Ooh, this one's interesting. Put it into my go list. Next, next. It's a practical thing. I want to run it like a business. I come in, look at what's there, make the decisions. And I've come to a place where I can do that pretty quick because I know what I'm looking for. And that's what I want to help you do today, right? This is just the start of helping you do that exact thing. Let me just jump over, make sure we don't have any questions. Apple looks like a prettier dance partner than Facebook. Yeah, Facebook is a mess right now as far as the chart goes. Earnings is tricky, tricky, tricky. Oh boy, we gotta be careful. Okay, we're running out of time, but I'm not done. I'm gonna pack more in. Listen, I said we're gonna look at the FANG stock. So what else is there? Well, there's Google. We gotta look at Google. Now, Google's not a cheap stock either, okay? Google's not a cheap stock either. Now, here's what we had, everybody. Not what we have, but essentially what we had. You know, we could go. Oop, see, there's that update getting me again. I didn't used to have to do this, but I do now. So we're going to go to that. You know, you've got a pretty nice pattern. You say, well, Blair, doesn't it go below that right there? Sure does. Sure does. Those are still the lines. I just wouldn't have traded it in there. It comes down to support, doesn't move up. I'm not in it, right? That's the beauty of using these things. You say, well, Amazon, or excuse me, Google in this alphabet, in this uh, instance, it, it, let's just say we were living real time right there. You might say, well, man, I love Google. What a great company. It's everywhere. And it's pulling back. It's taking a drop. So maybe I should go ahead and... and start a trade. Well, no, there's things we need to see to help us get in at the right time because that could have hurt you quite a bit. 
And if you were an investing mindset, well, you'd have a different approach. Trading mindset wouldn't have gone so well, wouldn't have helped. And you could have waited, saved your money, opportunity. Anytime your money's in a trade that isn't working, uh, you have risk of loss, obviously, but you also have opportunity loss. That capital isn't being utilized somewhere else. So we want to maximize your opportunities. Now, that's a little bit more than I intended to go into, but look at this chart. You've got, well, you've got an uptrend. It's not super clean, but you've got an uptrend, okay? I'll jump into another list here in just a second and show you some charts that are super clean, okay? Again, I'm not making recommendations that anybody go out and buy these stocks today. I'm trying to help you understand the concepts we apply when we are going to buy stocks, but I'm not saying that you should go out and buy these. Obviously, Google, also cost prohibitive for most of our students, eh, depending, depending, just for a lot of people. Uh, certainly some can trade it and do, but options is also another reason why people are able to do that. It really does help them uh, leverage their money more. You could trade options on Google a lot easier than $2,000 a share. Now that said, what happened here? Well, it got real hot. Earnings, boom, the price gapped up. So the pattern that we had, it's not really there anymore. Yes, it was a good pattern. It's not really there anymore. So is the stock hot? Sure is. Google's hot, right? It gapped up. They had a good earnings report. Wall Street's happy. People are buying stocks. It pops, it goes up. But there's no pattern for us anymore. Right? We don't have peaks and valleys anymore. There's no real pattern. So I'm going to wait until a pattern emerges. I'm going to wait till a pattern emerges in that. Okay. And I can go through. Listen, we can just keep going. These stocks. In fact, I did want to show you one. I think it's, we said we were going to look at Zoom. Zoom was going down. Now Zoom's starting to go up. It's starting to trend up. So we'll see what happens. It's very interesting where it's at. It's at support. So I would want to see some follow through. Now, for me, the problem here is earnings. It's so close to earnings. That's a little bit of a problem. So again, not making a recommendation there, but definitely interesting considering what we've been talking about. The XLK right at support. That doesn't mean, I want to say this, and then I'm going to, I'm going to move on to the last thing we're going to do here. Just because I showed you this. I'm not suggesting that all tech stocks are going to go up just because this is going up. But I am saying if I look at instruments, I might go, ah, oh, I have a little more confidence. I have a little more confidence. If the sector itself begins to rise, just like market tone, we like to say rising tides tends to raise all boats, right? So that's the principle we look at when we're going to tech stocks. So pause, pause, guys. Because I went through a lot there, okay? I don't expect you to be able to repeat all of this back to me today. I don't expect you to be able to turn right around and apply all of it. But I do want you to know, we just went through how to look at the XLK, support and resistance, trends, patterns, waiting for the wave, and looking at some of the most popular stocks out there and saying, yeah, the company on one sense is hot. Lots of these tech companies are very hot. On the other hand, as the stock goes for a trader, it's hot, but it's not ready. So we have to kind of differentiate. We want hot stocks. We want hot charts. And a lot of the stocks we looked at are hot. Some of them aren't, but some of them are. And we need to have patience and know, well, what's the right time? Because ultimately... I want you to be able to take action in your own finances when the time is right. And we've got to get down to when to do that. So I want to invite you guys. I'm going to post a link in here. I am going to do next week. Okay. I'm going to do a free five, oops, hit the mic, free five day challenge. Okay. This is our faith and finance challenge. I'm going to go through, this is going to be uh, something we've never done before. We've never actually taken this much time, talked about mentorship, where we can dive in and look at faith, which is something a lot of us on this channel, this is what we share. This is who we are at Tradeway. When we're talking about finances, this is an issue that is something that the Lord Jesus talked about. This is something the scriptures talk about. This is something I see a lot of uh, Christians kind of get stuck in. 
What's a healthy way to do that? Not a healthy way. What are the right mindsets that I need to have to go to another level? I have an entire program that I did with Tradeway that talks about mindsets, which I believe is the number one reason that people who even know how to trade don't get the results they want. You say, ah, I don't know about that. No, I promise you. Coaching in this skill set, so much of it comes down to mindset. We're going to talk about that kind of stuff. And we're also going to get into the skill set. Okay. This is the faith and finance. This is for an upgrade in your year. I want to help give you a boost. I talked about information. You're not just going to get information in this challenge. I want to give you, and I'm praying to God, I literally am praying that you will get a transfer of power, that you'll get something in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul, in your home, in your goals, in your prayers, that's going to help break you and your family. Anybody who benefits from you increasing, because it's not just about us. When I go higher, I am able to take other people higher. That's a conviction I have in my life. That's something I think you guys share too. So I want to help you do that. It's the five-day Faith and Finance Challenge. We're going to dive in further. As always, we're going to be back on Monday, back on Thursday. We're going to continue to do this. I'm going to drop that link in there for you guys. And we will be able to, let me see if I can just grab it here. Yep. Join one another next week. So I'm posting that now. Boom, boom. There it is for our Facebook friends and our YouTube friends. Uh, we're going to go deep on this. We're going to have interviews every day. We're going to have a specific topic every day. We're going to have homework every day. I heard somebody say yesterday, you're not changed by information. You're changed by action. And we're going to have action. We're going to have action in this challenge. So if you're saying, man, I want to honor the Lord, but I want to break through. I want to break through into my goals. We're going to talk mindset. We're going to talk skill set. We're going to do it five days. It's going to be a blast on every level. And so I hope you'll join me. Just click on the link there. You'll be able to join that. And like I said, we'll be back on Monday. We'll be starting up. So I'll see you in the challenge. I'll be there. Will you be there? We'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much, as always, for being on. If somebody else out there you think, hey, they got to see this, go ahead, like, share, send it on over to them. We'd love to have you share it with them. If you haven't subscribed, you're on YouTube, click the bell there right below the screen. And you'll be subscribed so you'll know anything that we're doing. You'll get a notification for that. Like us on Facebook, same thing. You'll get a notification letting you know that we are going live. We've got something coming up. You'll never miss anything. Listen, this skill set has tremendous potential. And as Jeffrey said, getting a mentor can change your life, right? It's not that we don't have the desire. Sometimes we need a greater transfer of energy. And by the way, I'm going to talk about the keys to breakthrough in the five-day challenge. I'm going to talk about the keys to breakthrough in the five-day challenge. So if you're there, you're going to get that as well. Those recordings will not be available to everybody. Got to be in the challenge, and they're not available forever. So you'll want to sign up and make sure that you can join us there. If you can't join us in the live recordings on that particular day, of course, you'll be able to watch them that night just like we do with these. But again, they won't be available forever. Okay, Nancy, I see you there. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for being on with me tonight. I'm going to go stay warm. Hopefully you and yours are doing the same, and I will see you next time. Thanks, guys.